The machine has two operation modes, automatic and manual. In manual mode, you can test all of the functions of the physical switches on the console. The controls on the console are as follows. From the top of the console, starting from left to right, there's the emergency stop button, the conveyor control, both forward and reverse, the lift-off arm control, both up and down, the discharge, continue engage buttons are used when the machine is in automatic mode, the manual and automatic switch, and the control power on, off, and start switch. At the bottom of the control, from left to right, is the travel override button, the travel control switch, both left and right, the movable bend clockwise and counterclockwise switch, the movable clamp button, the keypad, the stationary clamp open and close switch, the stationary bend clockwise and counterclockwise switch, and the squaring stop switch. The discharge, continue engage buttons are used when the machine is in automatic mode and the operator is running production. The same controls are on the pendant stand controls, which are typically placed closer to the operator during the production run. There is an additional e-stop there as well. Emergency stop buttons are located on the console, the pendant stand, and on both the movable and stationary bend boxes. To turn the machine on, switch the power on-off switch to on, then over to start. Listen for the air pressurizing the lines. If there is the need to turn the console off, wait 30 seconds for the drives to de-energize before attempting to turn on again. To begin to select or program shapes on the touchscreen, make sure the controller is in automatic mode and the red indicator light is on. From the program screen, press the run button in order to home the machine. Press F5. The traveling bender will come into the homing position on the track. There is a green metal rail ramp and a repositionable red rail ramp. The removable red metal ramp on the track allows a proximity switch to sense where the over-travel location is. After the travel of the moving bender has homed, you can now home the bending tables themselves. The screen will say, Check Benders. Make sure the machine is free of bar and the area is clear. Press F4 on the keypad or the green thumbs up on the touchscreen and the tabletop benders will execute their homing sequence. After the bender's home, the moving bender will travel out to the space required for the shape that is programmed on the screen. The program screen is set up by how the shape is run. There is the movable bender section, the center leg section, and the stationary bender section. Begin by entering the length of the first leg, the angle, and the direction you want the bend. There are quick keys with pre-programmed common angle shapes that you can quickly select common bend angles. Select the center leg and enter the distance of the center leg from the keypad. If the leg on the stationary bender is the same as the movable bender, there is a copy feature. Either press the copy at the bottom of the screen or F7 from the keyboard. This can speed data entry. From the program screen, you can select the files button at the bottom of the touch screen or F2 from the keypad and you will get into the shape libraries. Shape libraries allow you to save and load shapes from either pre-programmed CRSI shapes or up to 600 of your own custom shapes. To save a shape into a custom shapes, scroll to the area you want to save the shape to. In this example, we've selected location 150. Press copy working shape to shape 150 and the shape will be saved into that spot. To load a shape back into the program screen as a working file, go into Files, Custom Files, select the shape you want, and press Copy Shape 150 to Working Shape. The controller is set up with different tooling options, depending on the bar diameters you are working with. First, press the Machine Setup button. Select the bar size diameter from the touch screen. A pop-up box will display the available bar sizes. Select the bar diameter from the list. There may be multiple tooling options available, either split tooling or mandrel tooling. Select the tooling desired. 
Underneath each of the bend tabletops, there's a tooling removal switch. The switch activates an air cylinder and helps lift the tooling out of the turntable for easy removal. The control indicates the bend pin locations based on the bar diameter and tooling you have selected. The bend pin diagram is located at the bottom of the program screen. The red dots indicate the placement of where the bend pins should go in the turntable. If you are doing single bends, 90 or 180 degrees, and you're always bending in the forward direction, you're going to use side home. When using the split tooling and bending 45 and 90 degrees, you'll be using center home. When using the split tooling, there's a separate loading ramp that will need to be used and your clamps and guide bars will need to be adjusted for the different tools. When switching bar diameters, the clamps and the bar guides on the bend boxes and intermediate arms need to be repositioned. The bar guides on the intermediate arms can be repositioned by pulling the pin and sliding them to a new hole position. There should be sufficient enough space for the bars to slide in, however, not be too snug as to create any binding. The clamps can manually be positioned by pushing or pulling them into position to line up with the tooling. Make sure the load ramps on the table benders are adjusted as well. Once the travel and bend homing sequences are complete, you are ready to run shapes. To load the bar into the tooling, roll each bar one at a time from the conveyor onto the lifting arm. Position the pendant stand wherever you are loading and unloading the bar from. You can use the discharge button on the pendant stand or the console itself, or you can use the foot pedal. The squaring stop will pop up automatically. Make sure that the ribs of the bars are facing upwards and squared against the squaring stop. Press the continue button either on the console or from the pendant stand. The machine will make its bends. Discharge the bent bars either by using the foot pedal or by pressing the discharge button on the console or pendant stand. When measuring shapes, especially for the center leg or belly distance, always measure from the outside to the outside of the shape. The controller will show you the center leg length as the X length. The measurement for the height of the program shape would be the Y measurement, and the total cut length would be this measurement with the scissor icon. Angle Check allows you to check your angles before you run the shape in production. Program your shape or load it in from the libraries. Press Run from the program screen. A pop-up box will come up. You then select the Angle Check checkbox. Then press the green thumbs up button on the touch screen or F4 on the keypad. The machine will travel to its ready position. Load the bar. Press the continue button. The machine will begin running the shape and then it will stop and slightly back off the bar. Check the angle of the bar. If the bend is too weak or too strong, you can adjust the trim from the program screen. You can trim the angle up or down in order to match the angle exactly. Once you are satisfied with the angle, select the check button that appears above the shape diagram graphic on the screen. Check the other side on the movable bender. Follow the same steps. If the angles are proper, press the skip buttons that will appear above the shape diagram graphic on the screen. Discharge the test bar. Now you're ready for the production run. Auto Gauge allows you to select the option to have the movable bender position automatically as soon as the bars discharge. This can speed up the production process. To turn that option on, press Machine Setup button. Then press Machine Configure. Enter the password. Select the Auto Gauge checkbox in the center column. You must then go back to the Machine Setup button and check Auto Gauge in the right column. Press the Home button to go back to the program screen. Press the Run button. The Automatic Gauge option will show up in the pop-up screen. Select the Auto Gauge checkbox or press F3 from the keyboard. Then press the green thumbs up or F4 on the keyboard. 
Now the machine will automatically move the movable bender after the bars are discharged instead of having to hit the continue button. The bar stop switch is located by the stationary bender. This switch allows the operator to raise bar barriers. These barriers prevent bars from rolling too far when they are discharged from either a shear line measuring table or a chain conveyor. Bend radius is defined as the amount of bar that is bent around the tool itself. To determine the bend radius, measure from the inside of the bar to the outside of the bar, then divide by 2. If you are noticing that your center or belly distance is inaccurate, you can change the bend radius. This tricks the machine to thinking it's bending around smaller or larger tooling. By adjusting the bend radius, you can affect the length of the center belly distance. The intermediate center supports on the 211 and 111 can be removed to reduce the belly distance between the movable and the stationary benders. To remove the intermediate center supports, you should first attach a sling to the arm from a crane or forklift to support its weight. Remove the four bolts and disconnect the quick connect air fitting from the arm. Then lift the arm out of the way with the crane or forklift. The lift delay checkbox under the machine configure screen allows the operator to set a delay for the lift arms to remain up during the loading and unloading of bars from the machine. The operator needs to be careful not to make the time too short because the arms won't reach the full height of their lift. There are also manual adjustments on the lift up arms where you can adjust the airflow. Long bar weight allows the operator to pause the machine and guide a long leg around by hand in order to support the bar. Press the machine setup button, then the machine configure button. Enter the password 123. Check the long bar weight checkbox. Press the home button to go back to the program screen and press the run button. You will notice on the pop-up dialog box that the pause for long bar support is checked. Press the green thumbs up or F4 from the keypad to continue to run. In order to measure the maximum travel, run the movable bender all the way out to the end of the track. There is a green metal ramp at the end of the track that the sensor will pick up. Set the sensor about one half inch from the edge of the ramp. Run a tape measure from the face of the gauge stop to the center pin of the moving bender table. That is your maximum travel distance. In the controller under machine setup, press the machine configure button, enter the password 123, and enter the measurement under maximum travel. From the machine setup screen, press the utilization button. Production data will be displayed. There is also a calendar view where you can select individual dates and see by bar size how much tonnage was run. The machine calculates the utilization average by bar size. This data can be exported to a USB drive by plugging the USB drive into the back of the touchscreen control in one of the USB ports, then pressing the export button. The tonnage calculation is based on the bars per load loaded into the machine setup screen. Press the machine setup tab, then press the machine configure tab. Enter the password 123 and check the simultaneous load and unload checkbox. This option allows the operator to simultaneously load bar while discharging bent bar from the machine. This can speed production process.